Oh, guys, all got to go tap now to accept that you're being recorded. Um, if you want to have the speaker at the top, there is a way right up in the right hand corner to actually pin the speaker. So um, if you guys want to pin your pin the speaker. That will help too for presentation mode purposes. So guys, uh, this is our week four. I'm super excited because, you know, we only have two more weeks, right? So we had uh, lots of training that has happened, but I've got to just tell everyone, guys, it has been incredible training. Uh, I think it's going to be an incredible training tonight. But if you have all this knowledge and you're not doing anything with it, it's not going to bring you any further to your goals. Um, I used to always call it, um, you know, someone who we, we used to use a, a, a different term, but I keep ignorance on um, fire. So if you know nothing about anything, but you're just excited and working this business, it's much better than coming to every single class that we hold for you guys and just holding that to yourself. If you're not sharing it, if you're not doing the things um, we're kind of helping you along to do, you won't see anything uh, to get you further in your business. So I'm just telling you, as we hit week four here, uh, definitely take some of that good stuff. And even if you have to just take one thing so far to implement in your business, one thing at a time, that's all we're really asking. So tonight, tonight we have uh, two great ladies, two great leaders, leaders with us. We have Kayla Cutting and Lisa Brinker, and they are going to take you all through what I think we all worry about, which is onboarding right so we want to get we get someone new and then what do you do what's next what do you do with these people how do you get them engaged and involved and knowing what they can do so they're not nervous there's a we got to be truthful there's a set of nerves that kind of set in once you say yeah i'm going to buy my kit and either they're going to lean into it and start working the business but if we don't help them, if they're too nervous, it's much easier to just say, ah, heck with it. I'm not going to do anything, right? So they're going to help us uh, to help our consultants. So I don't know who's up first, Lisa or, Lisa or Kayla, but you ladies can take it away. I'm going to go on mute. All right. I wanted to just start by thanking Michelle for putting this whole thing together because this whole program was put together as Michelle's idea, all of us collaborating. But I wanted to tell you all that Kayla is a master at onboarding. And so I'm going to introduce you to Kayla. She's one of our best in our whole organization. She's going to tell you what she does. And then I'm going to circle back and kind of summarize everything that we talked about. But before we even do that, you know, when we say onboarding, I want to make sure that you know what we're talking about. So if you got a job, at Barnes and Noble or Wegmans or Walmart or wherever, they, you wouldn't just walk in the door and just start, right? You wouldn't just, they would say, here's the bathroom. Here's human resources. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. So even though I think some of you are a little bit nervous about this whole idea of onboarding, you think to yourself, oh, I'm not a good enough leader. Realize that you're that person that's kind of taking somebody in and showing them where everything is. That's what you're doing when we talk about onboarding. So Kayla is, like I said, one of our master onboarders in our organization. So she's going to talk a little bit and then I'm going to circle back. So Kayla. Oh, thank you. And I want to introduce Lisa. Um, Lisa is fantastic. I'm so excited to work with her as a fellow leader. Uh, but also Lisa is going to manage the chat. So if you guys have questions as we're doing this, please put your questions in the chat and don't be afraid to ask them because we want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, this is also not going to be um, a big handout presentation. So we want you to take notes um, because once you hear it and then you write it down, you're more likely to remember the things that we tell you. Um, and it's also a great way for you to be able to take down the notes and remember the things that you are going to implement into your strategy for how you're going to make this work. So um, remember to mute yourselves so that we don't have any background noise. And here we go. I do have a couple things that I'm going to share with you. So I am going to start there. Um, and here's, oh, 
this is going to be interesting because I am not a master at this. Is it going to let me? Maybe. Okay, let's see if that worked. Are you trying to share? Yeah. You should okay. be it. Yes, we can't see it yet. Oh, there you, you see go. it? You got it. Yay! Okay, so welcome to onboarding with Lisa and Kayla, or as we like to call it, welcome, welcoming and working with your new business partners, because that's what it really is. It's onboarding them, but it's really working and making that partnership with your new business partners, because that's what they are. They are not just um, a new person to your team. They're not just your new recruit, as we like to call them. They are your business partner, because if we can't work together with them, what are they? Um, so here we go. I am not good at this, you guys. There we go. <laughs> I am. I'm for. I'm warning you about all this. So take it as it is. Um, so you have welcomed a new partner to your team, and what's next? So you got excited. You got them on. You have gotten them signed up. We are past that part. We are past all the excitement, and now all the nerves have settled in. Now it's oh my gosh. I have to be a teacher. Well, Lisa and I happen to come to your rescue and we're gonna tell you how to do that part. So before we get into the next slide here, we're gonna, I'm gonna start off with telling you a few things that you're going to need to think about. Um, when you move into a new neighborhood, the first thing that you do is you probably meet your neighbors and you either go knock on their door or you get a welcome card or you get a little welcome gift. Um, sometimes it's just getting a welcome plate of cookies. So just like that, we want to come forward to meet our new business partners in the form of a welcome call or a welcome text. I like to do both. Um, and a welcome email. Now, remember this part that the phone is for the communication and the email is for the information. So remember the important part is that you want to form a relationship with these people. You might be excited and you might have already joined um, a conversation with them. This also might be your second or third line in your team. You still want to do the same procedures with them because you're the one who is either the leader or the aspiring leader. So take that role and hold pride to it. Um, you want to make them feel as welcomed as possible. You don't have to be a leader to take that position. Um, it is very empowering, but it's also very fulfilling to be able to welcome them in that manner. Um, but when you communicate with them, you want to be light in your welcome phone call or text, um, and you want to follow through with telling them that you're going to send them that email with all the information so that they can go back to that information um, because they might be just as excited and not taking notes. So we want to be able for them to have a resource to go back to. All right. So what and when to do it. So the first thing that you want to do is that welcome call or text, and you want to do that within the first 24 hours of them joining the business. And what does that welcome call look like? So you want to find out their why. Why um, did they join? Um, maybe you already found that out in the interview process, but maybe this is your second or third line. And so you might not know their why. Maybe they joined randomly off of your website. Um, so always reiterate their why on that welcome phone call. What do they want from this opportunity? Some people um, may want this opportunity so that they can share it more with others, which is great. And some people might want it for a more personal reason, which is also fantastic. But what you're doing when you're asking them these questions is just like we talked about a couple weeks ago with the interview process, 
We're helping them build their 30 second commercial in a sense when you're asking them these questions and asking them when they're excited and they're new to the business is the best time to ask them because then they have more passion for what they are doing. What are they willing to do in this business? So what I mean by that is, are they willing to only work one day a week because that's all the time that they have? Or are they only willing to um, do this as a side hobby because that's all that they want to do with it? Um, the, the what are you willing to do? Maybe they only want to do online shows. Maybe they don't want to do in-person events or vendor events. That is all okay. But you knowing what they're willing to do is going to help you as a leader help them. And if you don't have those things drawn out with them, how are you going to be able to coach them further on? Uh, setting up a weekly coaching call. This is my favorite thing. Um, and it's also one of the most important things. So setting up a weekly coaching call gives you time to reconnect with your business partners every week. It gives you time to set up goals with them. It gives you time to go over the weekly hurdles that they might have encountered. Um, maybe it's those rejections they might have gotten from that interview. Maybe it's they need more help with goal setting and time blocking. Those are the important things that we want to do. So setting up that dedicated time, again, also lets you know how dedicated they are in what they're willing to do in this business. So setting up that coaching call is super important. And if you do it right, uh, right out the door, then you've already set the standard for what's to come. Setting up a business launch. So again, another key important factor. Um, we know that the business kit does not arrive the day that they sign up. That is okay. Maybe they don't even have any products on hand. Maybe they've never shopped with us before. That is okay. That is why you are here. You are here to make their job easy. Just like Lisa was saying, you don't go to work and they just tell you, here you go most of the time. So let's be real in the fact that you're here to show them how to do this. So why not show them how to do the business as well with their business launch? I then take the next step as setting up a Zoom call. So just like this, um, most of my team is scattered all the way across the nation. Um, and in fact, I have yet to live in a city with any of my team members. So I always do it via Zoom, <laughs> but maybe that's because I move too much. I'm not quite sure what the reason is, but we, I always like to connect over Zoom. And I do that for two reasons. One, we can interact face to face and I love seeing facial expressions. I personally am a in-home party girl. Um, and this whole internet thing has been a, a change, game changer for me and a learning experiences last year. Um, but I can also screen share which is a great tech training thing. So I can then take and show them how to use some of our other tools that we have available. So that's the first thing that you're gonna do in that welcome call. It should last about 15 to 20 minutes. You don't have to go over every single um, detailed thing of what's gonna happen. You just wanna set them up. So we've done that. Now we're gonna do the Zoom call. And it should happen. Um, you can do it over Zoom. You can do it over Facebook chat rooms, whatever is most convenient for you. Um, and it should happen in the first two to three days. So 48 to 72 hours. During that, you're going to go over things like the back office. Hopefully they've already logged in and they've already taken a peek. But if not, go back there with them. And this is where I say screen sharing is a great thing to do with them. Go in the back office. Show them how to set up a party back there. Show them how to see where our resources tab is. Show them where they can find the shop tab and what it looks like. This is your job to pass it along to them, just like showing them how to run the cash register or where the bathroom is. It's the same thing, but we're going to just show it to them in a different form. We're going to show them how to do a party both online or in home, because maybe that's what they need. They need to be able to do them either way. Some people can only do them online, which is okay. And some people only want to do them in person. That's another option. Um, show them how to do a live. You can teach them by doing it right here on Zoom. You can show them how you do it and make sure that they are um, comfortable and role play with them. 
um, explain how our BEP program works because it's one of the greatest programs that we have for our newest business partners, but really make sure that they know that it's there for them and get them going on those first two goals. I always set it up for the first two. Yes, we can focus on one, but that first one's in 14 days. So let's get real that we have another one that's right behind its tail at 30 days. So those first two goals are the biggest goals that we have and let's get them set up for them. Um, I always explain how and when hyper wallet pay point works, because that seems to be the biggest question that comes around day five. So <laughs> they always seem to have orders that go in right away. And then they want to know, well, how do I get paid? And so I always explain it right out the door, how and when it works. I tell them that they'll be getting the email, that kind of thing. Um, and then I also, since we're on screen share, I walk them through Facebook pages and groups because I'm going to add them to a lot of our Facebook pages. I'm going to add them to our organization page and I'm going to add them to the inspirations page so that they can see these things and see where their resources are besides the back office so that they can see that there are other consultants out there, not just me, not just Michelle and just Lisa that they can see other people and other consultants that might have joined the same day as them and get the same, be able to get the same information. Um, it's a really great tool to be able to show them that these things are there. Then the next and last thing that I like to go through in those, that first little bit is their business launch. So it should have been scheduled when you did your welcome call with them. And then you should have been able to set up the party link with them when you went over the back office because you taught them how to do that. So you as your as the sponsor or as the leader, the upline, however you want to look at it, if their direct sponsor is not helping them and you're the one helping them and they're your second or third line, doesn't matter. Help them. It is the biggest benefit that they will get, that any of you will get. Hold their business launch with them. Host it for them, just like they were your hostess. Host coach them, just like they were your hostess, so that they can see it for themselves, especially if they've never been a hostess with us, especially if they've never shopped with us. They have no idea. Um, so host that business launch for them, just like you would a party, whether it's online or in person. Your new partner participates in everything as if they were the hostess. They invite all their guests. They play in all the games. They are your hostess with the mostest because that's what they are. You just change some of the verbiage instead of um, trying to get them to be the new um, business partner. They already are. So now we're trying to get all of their guests to support them in this new business. That's the only difference. Um, and if done online, their launch group party becomes their VIP group, which Lisa is going to cover for us here in just a little bit. Remember, um, I'm going to stop screen sharing here for a second and come back to, ah, there we go. I did it. <laughs> Am I off screen share? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so remember to make them independent when you're doing this. They are the expert and you want to make them feel like the expert. You don't want to show them everything and then say, here you go. You want to be able to show them how to get there. You want to make sure that they know that they can get things from corporate. They're going to get emails from them. And those are just as valuable as the information that you're sharing with them, that we have great information like um, Christine's emails that she has. Always be friends with them on social media. Always. Um, always be in all of their groups and all of their parties because they might post the link and it might not work. And you're not there to um, tell them that they did something wrong, but you're there to help them and say, oh my gosh, your link isn't working. Let's help your customers find the right link and get them to the right place. I had a girl one time and she posted the e-commerce website link instead of her own party link because she thought it would take them still to her page. So you're there just to help them along. Um, make sure that you're always doing that goal setting with them and make sure that you're always congratulating them on all the things that they are doing because welcoming them on, in that onboarding process is so important that you want to make sure that they are getting all the things, but that they're remembering all the things. 
Um, also remember the one last, my one last big thing that I want to do is I, um, I personally have a team chat. And so that's where my team can come and they can ask each other. So when I was saying that I add everybody to groups, make sure that you have something set up for your own team. Maybe you only have, there's only two of you. So it's me and I welcomed Lisa. We're going to just use this as an example. It's me and I've welcomed Lisa. So it's the two of us. So we have a chat of two and then we brought Michelle on. Now we have a chat of three. Just keep growing that chat and it's okay. You have to start somewhere, but when you have a team going, then you're all going to be there. So when there's the three of us, and then we've added another person, the three of us are welcoming that person, not just the one person that brought that um, business partner on. That one person now feels welcomed by an entire tribe, an entire support system without even having to step foot anywhere. That's what it feels like when you go to work anywhere else. Like Lisa was saying, you go in and you go to work at the grocery store and it's not just the person who hired you that says hi to you when you walk in the door. All your coworkers say hi. So it's no different. Make sure that we're welcoming everybody in that same fashion. Any questions? Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit to that, Kayla, while we're waiting for some questions because I wanna summarize what everybody just heard from you. You do have some access to really great business coaching. And so, what I have learned is that a really great onboarding system, and this is where you guys need your notebooks and your pens, okay? Because I feel like it penetrates your brain better if you're writing it down. A really great onboarding system consists of four things. The first one is it's simple, right? So we do have a simple system. We actually, Kayla talked about a welcome email. We also, there's a belief out there, which I, I firmly go along with, that you shouldn't be giving anybody anything more than one page front and back. So you can overwhelm people and we don't wanna overwhelm people, right? When people join us, their excitement is here and their belief is down here, right? If you throw a binder at them, they're going to get scared. They're going to get nervous. They're going to get overwhelmed. So simple meaning one page front and back. I have a welcome document that you guys are welcome to use, or you can make up your own. I actually have access to a lot of other, because of this little course that I'm in, I have a whole bunch of like professional, like getting started documents that I would be happy to share with people. But the first number one thing is it has to be simple. The second thing is that it has to be clearly defined, right? So do we have that here in our system, what Kayla was talking about? Yes, we do. We have 14, 30, 60, 90. That is clearly defined. Our BP program is clearly defined. You get them to 14, you get them to 30, you get them to 60, you get them to 90. That is a clearly defined system, right? So that's number two. So Kayla already checked off box number one and box number two. Another thing is that the industry leaders out there believe that it should be tools-based. And I wanna say this now because I think that a lot of us here forget about in the business hub, there's a business hub tab and there is a whole training section. So what Kayla was talking about with explaining to people how they get paid, there's literally a tab for them to press on. There's a tab in there to make their friends list. There's a tab on there. How do I get paid? The BEP program. How do I get you? Every possible question they could ask is in that training tab. But a lot of us forget about that. But that tool based system is there for us to be using. We should be using that. So I want to make sure that you guys, that's going to be your homework is to refresh yourself in what is in the training tab in our business hub tab in the business hub, okay? And then finally, number four, the fourth thing that every great onboarding system should have, I told you there's four, simple, clearly defined tools. And the last one is action oriented. And the action that we're talking about is this launch party, right? So when Kayla and I were talking about this, I said, I always take my new people come in, we do a launch and when they're 
party is is you know pretty much wrapped up in a bow we changed the name to this is donna's vip group and now her people are there and they're adding more people she's still able to get more parties but that becomes their vip group so i wanted to make sure that you guys knew about those four things why is onboarding so important it creates duplication in your team and it, de it develops strong independent leaders the truth is the only way you are going to have true time freedom in your business is if you have duplication and great leaders. This is really important. And the two biggest mistakes that people make in this industry is either they don't have an onboarding system at all or they're giving people too much information. So if you're a leader here now and you're thinking to yourself, I'm doing great in sales, I'm doing great in bringing on new team members, but they're not staying, you might wanna look at what you're doing for onboarding, right? And we also wanna look in that mindset, right? That belief, we wanna make sure that the people that are joining us are comfortable with their belief, right? So you're, as a leader, your job really is to manage fear and overwhelm. So we wanna be setting proper expectations. We want to be reaching out, like Kayla said. We want to be goal setting, like, like Kayla said. So at the end of this, I'm going to, I see a couple of people said yes, post. Somehow I missed steps two and three. Oh, good. I'm glad you said that. Who said that? Elise. It's simple, clearly defined tools and action oriented. And I will post for the handouts the welcome document that fits on one page front and back the welcome email. I also have a great mentor guide and I have the friends list that you can give to them. And your homework is going to be to learn the training tools in the hub. But you're really, what I hear, what I learn, like I said, the industry leaders out there, you're supposed to treat every new person like you're, they're going to be your next superstar, but you're supposed to work with them like they might quit tomorrow. Okay. Now, another thing I wanted to just bring up, and I said this to Kayla last week too, you know, because Kayla and I both teach, you know, you know, talk like teachers, right? Oh, thank you, Jean. Um, she said she can't wait to see our welcome email. <laughs> you know how there's elementary, I, I just want to make this easy for you guys. You know how there's elementary schools and there's like, let's say three fifth grades, right? And sometimes it gets known around the school that one class has the highest scores. And then this other class doesn't have such high scores. And maybe this other class, their scores are in the tank, right? That has nothing to do with the teachers. That's the way the principal put those kids in the class. I just want you to know that. That has nothing to do with the teachers. And I want you to realize that sometimes people are not going to stick and it has nothing to do with what you're doing. So you can't let that get to your heart, right? You got to do everything that we're talking about here, but you can't let that affect your mindset. Does everybody understand what I'm saying by that? Mm -hmm. And that's a great point because the other, the other thing is, is that that's why I said it might not be the person that you brought on. Maybe it's your second, or maybe it's your third line and you just need to reach out and say, hi, because they're still part of your team. They're still part of that group. And they need to know that there's more people that are here to support them than just one person. It's not just the person that said hi to them and, and welcomed them. It's everybody that should be part of this. And that's why I find it so important to have like a team chat, for example. My team chat is my one thing that I think is so important for everybody to know that they're welcomed and that they're welcomed by more than just one person and that there's more than one person available to them for resources like that. Maybe I'm not always available. Maybe they, maybe they need something and I'm not, I can't always be there. So therefore, there's somebody else that can say, oh yeah, I remember Kayla telling me this. And here's where it is, or here's how to get there. And to be resourceful in this business is just as important as being able to work this business. Well, the other thing, Kayla, I have a girl that, I, 
fresh in my mind. I have a girl that just joined fairly recently. So I did do this. I did the welcome call. We did our Zoom. I went through the business hub. I showed her where everything was. She still reached out to me to ask me about some product knowledge, right? And so I said to her, listen, I just want to let you know, I'm going to explain some of this stuff to you, but just in case I was in Timbuktu and you couldn't reach me, it's over here. So I wanted her to know that I was like, I'm here to help you and I want to help you. But I also wanted her to know she's going to have to learn how to figure it out and find it herself. But the other thing too, that Kayla was talking about with the goal setting, right? So when we have people that actually achieve their goals, what happens is they're creating their own personal success story. And when they create a personal success story, it's incredibly powerful because then they can share their testimonial with other people about the benefits, about the financial opportunity, about the products, right? So we wanna make sure that they're using the products within those 30 days, the first 30 days for sure. And we wanna make sure that they're able to create, you're helping them create a personal success story. And another thing that I heard that I really loved too was teaching your new people HTF. So what's HTF, right? Like what the heck, another acronym? HTF is they're gonna reach out to their friends and they're gonna say, I just started a new business. I had one. I'm wondering if you'd like to help me. Maybe you can try some of these products and then you can give me your feedback. That's the HTF. But that is a great way for new people to reach out to their network without feeling like they're not, you know, when they're first getting started, HTF is a nice way to um, have them at least get into that territory a little bit. <laughs> Most definitely. So I would love to see if we have any questions. I don't see any in the chat, but the, we have given you guys a ton of information tonight. And I would love to see if we have any questions from anybody about how we do this or why we do it this way. And I know it's probably different than the way that you guys have been doing it. And that's okay. It doesn't always have to be the same. Um, so Stephanie says... I was what read would you, you recommend for team members that can that come out of the gate strong but totally drop off? Do you ever do a redo on onboarding? Absolutely, Stephanie. We were here from day one, and let me tell you what a cluster that was. Right, so we were all frantic on June first, um, and it took us a few months, and then all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I have these consultants, and they've probably never even done." A business launch, but I was so worried about my own business and I was trying to help the ones that were asking questions. And that's exactly what you do. Um, sometimes it's a great way to go back um, during a new season. So maybe it's during the summer launch or a spring launch. Christmas season is a fantastic time to do a re onboarding, get them reintegrated back into the system and do a business launch. Just do a new business launch with them. Hold their hand and do the whole thing with them. Um, and it's okay. The greatest thing about this business is it's here for us when we need it um, and when we can work it. We have we all have the same stories on across the board that we'll, we know somebody who was doing great and then they took their time off um, and then they come back. Um, I personally, my sister is on my own team and she's the mom of five kids and sometimes she just can't do it and sometimes she's great, um, but life is more important and that's what's great about this business is that it gets to be that way for us. We don't get to get fired. <laughs> You know, Kayla, just also since you mentioned about your sister too, I wanted to mention something else and that is similar, my mom. Yeah. yeah. So my mom has zero knowledge on Facebook, zero knowledge on this kind of business. So what she does is she goes into my VIP group, she copies my posts and my verbiage, and then she emails it out to her friends. And it works. It works for her. So, you know, I think the one thing that has been become a real revelation for me lately is that there isn't actually only one way to do everything. And as long as you allow your people to work with what's best for them, like that works best for my mom. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh no, you have to learn how to post and fit, you know. 
her, her friends are reading the emails. Shannon has her hand raised. I love it. Yay, Shannon. Let's go, Shannon. What do you got? I was just clapping because I like that there is not, that was a clap. It wasn't a hand raise. <laughs> what are you clapping? I was just going to say, no, because I love the fact that you said that there, you know, that there's, a, there's not one way to do this, that we have to kind of work around people. That was my, my clap. <laughs> you know, yes. It reminds me of years ago, I was a technology director in my school district and I had people that didn't know how to send out an email, didn't know what an email was, couldn't attach an an attachment to an email to save their life. And then I had other people in a completely different level. But you have to meet people where they are, figure out what they're capable of. And like Kayla said in the beginning, when you're asking them, what are you willing to do? And then you just go from there. But if you can help them achieve that personal success story, how much more growth will you see, right? So that's what we're going for. And I remember in the tools, when I talked about the tools and the business hub, and that training tab, we also do have the Kickstart email series from Christine and the Star Blazers. So that's something that you can put on your list for tools. Also, anybody have any other questions? Anybody want to use any icons? Raise your hand, pop your hands, whatever. And I want to say based off of what you just said there, Lisa. So think about it this way. If I were to set the goals for you, if you were to start and I were to say, well, Lisa, you're going to hit BEP 14, 30, 60, and 90, and you're going to be a leader within that time, and you don't hit those goals, you're going to feel disappointed in yourself. So when you ask your new people that are coming on with you, your new business partners, what their goals are, and you're helping them attain their goals, they're going to feel that much more confident. Imagine going to the gym and the, your trainer tells you, this is what you're going to do, and you don't obtain that it doesn't work out very well. We just quit going. That's what happens. And we don't want our people to quit showing up because they don't feel like they've done what they're supposed to. Yeah, that's perfect. Agree. I also wanted to mention something and I don't know if a lot of people in here saw it or not, but I did a little post in the graphics group and asked about what was your biggest piece of confusion when you joined and a lot of people mention some things that are kind of out of our hands or they're out of our hands for the people that are on this, on this call. There's, there's actually, there's not really much we can do about most of what they were talking about was having to do with the website. Like that's nothing we can actually fix right now. But a couple people did say product knowledge. And I did want to make sure that, you know, you stress to people that you, they don't have to know everything, right? Like Kayla's always says, there's a label on everything. There's so much information that you can find. There's so many people that you can go to to ask questions. So nobody is expecting anybody to know every single thing. That is important. And I think, you know, sometimes you'll have somebody that joins and they're, they're, they're substituting procrastination and perfectionism. They'll say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, but first I want to learn all the products right? We don't want that. We want to take advantage of that blast off concept. The first 30 days when their excitement, like I said, is here, bring their belief up here and go. Don't worry about the product knowledge. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys, you know, heard Lisa, that. Lisa, goes back to what I was saying when we started, ignorance on fire. That excitement okay. is what sells. Your excitement, not knowing every ingredient. I've been doing this a long time. I've learned products change no need to spend the time on that. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And like but Michelle always says, there's a label on every product. So if you're not sure what it is, you read the label because it's going to tell you something about it. It's pretty easy. I mean, and it's not even that it's just easy, but we also have a website. If you're really not sure, I'm sure if you go to the website, it's going to tell you, well, it brightens your skin or it makes your hair feel soft and smooth. <laughs> there are enough keywords on every product description that we have. It's going to tell you something to make you sound like an expert. You don't have to know everything. Yeah, I actually had to say to my mom, mom, I think you're substituting perfectionism for procrastination. Like you're, you're not going to ever know everything. And we're lucky that we have that many products. Yes. That's why we're lucky. So it's just like, I'm sure none of us know the, the 
ingredients to every recipe we like to cook. We still get out the cookbook. We still look up the recipe. It's no different. And I use all these different um, synopsis of all these different things in our lives because I've had people say, well, wait a minute. And I go back to your daily life. And you, if you can recollect what it's like in that moment of your life to this, it makes sense. It completely makes sense. It's full circle. Oh, we went back to um, the being told no at the dessert table, right? But when we told the waitress no, that we didn't want dessert, did we send the waitress away and she never came back? No, she still came back because she still needs to bring your check to your table, right? So you don't get to just walk away from it. But it's the same thing with our, our business. It's still the same idea. If we just bring our normal everyday life back to some of these things, it makes much more sense. You just got to think a little bit out of side of the box. Um, so Deanne said, I made flashcards for my first shows that I did this week. Yay, you did a show. That's fantastic. And it helped so much. Flashcards are amazing. I am all about them. So. Um, one of my girls finally learned that I use sticky notes when I do lives because that's how I get through them. And she's like, you do? And I said, well, yeah, how else am I supposed to know everything? She's like, I didn't know we could use sticky notes. <laughs> so yes, flashcards, those are absolutely fantastic. In fact, back when we were um, the first round of Body Shop, that's what came in our welcome kit. We had um, five by seven index cards um, that were our party cards. And that's what we stood up in front of a room full of people at a party. And we read right off of those index cards. So flashcards are great. If you need to write down some key words or full sentences, use them. Um, Kay Kayla, yeah. what, did that, what did that do? When we were reading off the party cards, everybody at the show knew what? They didn't have to know everything that they right. had supportive material that you are allowed not to know, you know, every single product that we have resources right. for that. So it's exactly. totally replicatable at that moment and more people are drawn to the business. Exactly. Um, somebody says, do you think we will be able to get a product info ingredient book? Um, so back before we did have what was called a product power binder. In a sense, we are more um, green friendly and now we have it in our back office. So I think we still have that. We just have it in a different form. So if you go into your resources tab and yes, you have to be able to find it. And there are tricks and tips on how to be able to find things more easily. Um, we have that. It's just being able to know how to find it it has all the product ingredients or the product information right there on those product power sheets. Use them because they're fantastic. And if there's not one there that you're really looking for, email customer support and tell them that we need it because they will make sure that we get it. Um, it is a great tool. Um, and I do agree with you that it is, we do need it but it is there. So I have one girl who took screenshots on her iPad of all of those sheets and then categorized them into folders. So she has the skincare one and she has the makeup and she has hair care. And she basically made her own product power binder by doing it in screenshots. So she just has it in a green form. Just let me give you one other a way to find it, guys. If you're in your back office and you go into shop, click on the item. There's actually a thing that says ingredients. Yep. Um, so you can see every single ingredient and every single product that way as well through your shop. Um, and it just makes it easy. And then like if someone asks, you could actually just copy it all, paste it and send it to them. Right. Jenny says that she saved them all to her Dropbox. Same idea as what my girl did on her iPad. Um, and then Michelle says when she started, um, she printed them out and put them into a binder. So that's kind of how we used to do it back in the day. Um, so yes, all of those things are great. And if that's what works for you and your business, fantastic. I personally am a paper and pen kind of girl, okay? That's how I work. So I have notebooks like you would not believe I've strewn across my desk because I write everything down. That's how I do things. That works for me. I'm not telling you that you have to do it that way, 
But if it works for you, go get it. Um, sticky notes, they work for me. They might not work for you. It is okay. So if you need to print something out, print it out. Be um, friendly about it and don't overprint. But if that's what's better for you to put it in a binder, then so be it. It's okay. Um, make it work. Yeah, Kayla, just to add on to that, when I was making the analogy about the classroom too. So, you know, take that fifth grade classroom, right? In that classroom, they teach us now as parents that there's all different kinds of learners. We have auditory learners and visual learners and kinesthetic learners, right? Well, those are all gonna grow up and get on your team. <laughs> so make sure that you're meeting people where they, you know, where they learn best. Some people hear it better, some people see it better, some people need another way of of you know addressing whatever the you know the content is, but I think it's it's important that we understand that everybody's different. There's lots of different ways to do different things. And as long as we're there as a support system, I think that's the bottom line. Keep those four success tips for onboarding in your notebook and you'll be fine. All right. Um, do we have any other questions before we wrap this up? Wow, I'll let them think about it. I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much, Lisa and Kayla. I mean, you guys are awesome leaders with us, but it's so nice that you're willing to share your knowledge with everyone and give them your processes. I think it puts everybody else at ease. So we actually know how to do these things. Um, I hope everyone talk lots of lots of notes. Yeah, I'm seeing everybody. Awesome. Great job, ladies. So good. Yes, absolutely. Um, I also want to mention to everybody, uh, if you are coming to our retreat, I have to have our count in this week. So I have to have it in, like it has to be into me, the form by Thursday. So if you're still for some reason, not quite sure, or maybe you're waiting for a flight to go down. Yeah, I know. I understand that uh, people on the other side, it's, it's a little more exp um, expensive to fly in. But if you can make it, please fill out that form because I have to have the count to uh, for our dinners and what people are having for dinner. So guys, and then I'm also, as you knew, I wasn't uh, at home before, right, right before the call started. I was out picking up prizes and gifts and all the other fun stuff for the event. So no more questions. I will stop recording since we don't have any questions. Yeah, so thank you, thank you everyone.